The Happy Gaming Cup continues. Winner bracket semi-final number two. So we got a best of five boys and girls, and we got some Koreans in the mix. On the blue team, we have Gonda and we have Hyde. Hyde playing playing Brightwing here. So we are in the best of five area right now. We got Genshin Impact, which is apparently the old C8 team. If you are a little bit familiar with the Chinese scene and you've watched more of these Asian videos, uh, Asian server tournaments on my channel, then you should be familiar with C8 at least a little bit. So this is most of their players. So these are actually two pretty heavy hitters that are facing off against each other in the semifinal final of the winner bracket already trying to reach a winner bracket final. So this could be a pretty interesting series for sure here. Now again, the Happy Gaming Cup is pretty much uh, the last tournament that will be played on the Chinese servers. Blizzard is shutting the Chinese servers down. Again, there is a difference. This is not the Asian server. This is the Chinese server. So they have a dedicated server. The Asian server that is used by most of the Korean players, the Taiwanese players, and everybody else. Uh, that's a different server. And Blizzard is only shutting down the Chinese server because of political and financial things. There was license problems that they had in China. They're shutting down the World of Warcraft servers over there as well. And so, yeah, this is something that is pretty much happening this weekend. And therefore... We have now all of this, the final tournament happening. So, yeah. But we are in the winner bracket summer final right now. And for now, we got all the way up at the top. Our one on one lane established with the Haka going up against a Blaze. And down at the bottom of the map with the one minute mark having passed, we're going straight for the first few pumpkins as the teams are trying to push this a little bit. Talking about Towers of Doom, bot lane is obviously the most important. Just technically speaking, every single time that you're playing on a Heroes of the Storm map, the map where most of the mercenary camps travel through is the most important one. Just as a rule of thumb. Simply because you can set up very aggressive pushes with mercenary camps if you dominate that lane. You can steal your opponent's camp as well. You have an easier time pushing for course through that you see it on Dragonshire, you see it here on Towers of Doom, just to name two examples. But this is something to definitely keep an eye on. In this case, it's also because having control over both of the bell towers at the bot lane allows you easier access to the bottom altars whenever they spawn. Now, in this case, I'm fairly curious which team is going to pull ahead here. Again, this is two very strong teams that absolutely crushed their quarterfinal matches. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, having the Chinese meta in front of us is always changing things up a little bit if compared to what we're seeing in the West. Now, in this case, we also have some Korean players as already highlighted previously, which is also going to impact things a little bit. And seeing Hyde play is also pretty fun. I mean, again, Hyde did not play at the offline event in Miami. He was actually commentating it back then. If you missed some of these tournaments, you should definitely check out the playlists also on YouTube, especially for the offline tournament, the first international offline tournament that we had in Years of the Storm in four years. There's a playlist for that. And other tournaments that I can definitely recommend too is Meta Mapness. If you missed Haunted Mines, for example, Hanamura and Black Hearts Bay in the pool, that's something that you should definitely have a look at. And the same is also true for Meta Madness, where if you're bored with the meta and the same heroes being played, oftentimes over and over again meta madness is pretty much your thing so a couple of playlists that should be checked out if any of this applies to you first kill we're still waiting for it but the top left top right it's a traditional exchange of altars whereas at the bottom of the map between the bottom and the mid lane we still have the battle between the two teams trying to take the initial lead here team easy girl over here uh, yeah they're putting out right now they're coming in with a slide. I'm surprised enough to see it to see in the first place, but they are pulling it off nearly as Junker is about to die, but he makes it out. Instead, it's all of a sudden Tychus that gets nearly crushed here. Brightwing also. Hyde attempting to escape, but he's the first blood in the game. You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> so, yeah. They get the altar. <laughs> Genshin Impact, they take the altar, and it seems like they're also about to take another kill now, but they got close. They nearly cooked the bird. Now Brightwing is helping out. Careful, you don't want to run into place and then die before Brightwing teleports in. So we have level 7 talents. No spit for Brightwing this time. Instead, we have the critical mist. 
And all the way up at the top, still the one versus one. The camps get taken. Nobody's invading anything. There's no big commitment made. We had the fight over the altar, but that's the only thing that we're getting for now. So level 7 talents are in for the two teams. Bit of an experience lead for Genshin Impact 2. They got that. And all well, in the meantime, we have the pressure play at the bottom of the map as the red team is trying to get Sylvanas maybe even in position to do more damage here. Uh, Sylvanas, obviously, going to be a pretty big factor as the game continues. If in the late game you're able to get a few kills and control of the map, then Sylvanas can always help you very easily to take control over a bell tower or two. But there's the counter kill. The bur oh, birdie! falls dead <laughs> and he gets away nice okay so falls daddy is doing his thing and gets the kill on sylvanas now actually trying to follow up with another one so the blue team is getting a little bit unleashed here just before the two teams hit their level 10 sylvanas is trying to jump out but i think she might have a bit of a problem on her hand here and she dies before blaze can assist and try to help her so yeah job well done so now we have two kills against one in favor of team easy girl I told you, these two teams are very likely going to battle it out very, very heavily here. And that's what's currently happening. So we have another altar spawning on the map. And ETC is immediately trying to channel that one through. So far, nothing happened yet. But ETC at the front has to be super careful again. He can be a nice engaged tank. But he is also a little bit weak in regards to hit points if you compare him to a beast like Diablo and talking about our bad boy here Mr. Diablo himself now trying to channel obviously getting interrupted Mosh Pit is in Dance Baby Dance and the ults also on the other side with the immediate Odin pop by Tigers as they're trying to zone them away from the altar so they can channel it and uh, yeah draw even again with Genshin Impact but the fight continues. They haven't given up on this yet. Diablo all the way up at the front. Fully stacked with the souls. Riptire in the back. And Odin, Tychus, he's in trouble. Gets flipped around and that should be the end of him. Tychus, he turns it. He turns it and they get the kill on Junkrat instead. They also drop Diablo. So the blue team with a double kill. Well done. Bit unexpected and not stopping here. It's another kill for Easy Girl. They were hoping to also get Blaze into a literal corner. But the Gust didn't put him down as much as they hoped for. They really wanted to pin him there. But just couldn't. Now as the shots are being fired. The fight at the bottom of the map continues. There's the barbecue. But Blaze is dead. So is Tykus though. Damn. They went from, nah, we don't want to commit to fights, to just slaughtering each other over the altar. Six kills to two now in total. Eight kills at the seven minute mark and 32 points on each side. So yeah, it's a party for sure. Can't wait to see a couple of mosh pit attempts here also from ETC that don't get instantly interrupted. If he later on can maybe isolate a target and then make him dance. I mean, obviously, they pulled all the stops in the last fight, but he didn't get that much value. Uh, well, I actually, he got some value out of it, so yeah, it's not quite right. He also isolated them a little bit up at the top as the fight happened at the bottom of the map that in the end resulted with Junkrat getting killed, so good for them. But, yep. All the way up towards the... Uh, top now we have the Haka and Blaze rotating between the lanes making this happen pretty easily down here to the bot lane it's again camp after camp it's all about the pumpkins trying to make the pumpkins work as well as they can to drop these uh, walls but at the eight minute mark we still haven't seen the gate destroyed so nothing happened but <laughs> talking about nothing happening Falstead gets deleted yeah, got erased from existence within half a second. Goodbye, my friend. Yeah, Junkin is trying to isolate the Arca. That didn't really work out. Tranquility, there it is. They were hoping to get that boop in, but the Stormbolt, not the Stormbolt, the uh, Stun already connected and uh, prevented him from stepping in. But Diablo is making another engage. I'm mean, Brightwing. Damn, frame perfect. Able to move out of harm's way as the red team is looking for channels. Yeah, isolation is missing. Coordination not absolutely on point. Oh my god, that tongue barely missing. Sylvana should not have survived through that. 
She got a bit lucky there. One of the altars got channeled. Genshin Impact got at least one of them. But now we're having that fight over the last one at the bot lane. Both teams with level 13 talents as they are trying to pull even further ahead. And now that we are around the 10 minute mark, obviously those death timers are also a little bit more impactful. Still not a single bell tower that has been taken. Brightwing with the channel and she succeeds. Blaze is also down and they have Diablo in a corner. They're trying to go for another kill here. Mosh Pit is still there and the attempt gets interrupted. Short cooldown for ETC and he dies and so that No, Brightwing gets away. Brightwing gets away. Hyde is able to make it out of the fight, but ETC was murdered. The cow is down. Yep. And off we go. I mean, honestly, we got pretty much like all of the ingredients to open a McDonald's here. We got the beef and we got the chicken. So that's already half the battle. If you count more fury and then broccoli is also on the menu. So yeah, we're getting there. Can open up our own franchise. Ah, they greeted for Sylvanas and then Blaze punished them. Big hit, big double stun. Fruit Fly and Haka both down. And now Gonda is on the run. And he gets burned to a crisp as well. Crispy Nuggets right there. <laughs> it's an endless fight. <laughs> oh boy. They're just brawling, brawling, and brawling now that they're taking down Tychus too. So, yes, eight kills, two, nine. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. But. Seems like with four heroes dead on the blue team side, Team Genjin Impact is now coming in to take their camp away. So maybe finally an opportunity to drop that bot lane. That should kind of... This is a meme. Really? Three pumpkins and one tower? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a waste. I honestly think that it would have been better for Sylvanas when she came back to simply go for the bottom gate and help the wave and the rest of the team to push through that. Going for the camp, it could have had anybody there. It didn't need to be Sylvanas. So, yeah, it would have been a little bit easier. But either way, 16 talents are in. The blue team is going to get them soon as well. They're still trying to go for Diablo a little bit and he was a bit far out but still saved. Shots are fired. 24 to 28 points on the core. A favorable position for Genshin Impact. And with that, we have level 16 for both sides. The entire wall has finally been taken down. The Haka is at the top. And there is a triple global for Team Easy Girl. So in the late game, they can control these lanes so much better. They have Falsa, they have the Haka, they have Brightwing. They can really jump between lanes without a problem whatsoever. And it should eventually lead to them being able to pressure these lanes a little bit more. So it's kind of something that I want to see here. Them capitalizing a bit more on all of that mobility that they have with these heroes. Especially as we are having uh, Alter slowly taken. So they could go for a double push without any issues whatsoever. So far we have seen very little of that. But yeah, the red team is doing a great job in slowly pulling ahead here. But yeah. All the way up at the top lane, we got the Haka now taking over again. And down here at the bottom of the map, Junkrat gets sniffed out as he was sitting in. But the teams are definitely playing this a little bit slower now. The next Alter phase is a triple. You don't want to use any, lose anybody before that happens. So they're playing with a bit more time. But they could really use those globals to try and give themselves a bit of a lead on these triple Alter situations. Have a double channeling at the top, jump down. It's just simply one. Maybe even go for a bit of an interrupt at the top uh, right and then always move in with the rest of the team whenever you can force the fight over the third altar as we're usually seeing. The position also is in their favor in uh, that regard that it's a massive distance now between the altars here so yeah the Haka can easily go down to the bottom of the map give the blue team numeric advantage as they're moving in for it and I have to assume that this is also going to be the game plan here. So yeah they're all moving in down at the bottom of the map is exactly as expected and this should be the end of Diablo. And they have to sacrifice the Gust, and he's still not dead, the fuck? Um, yeah, that was big for the red team. That was really big. They used so much to get that kill. And it was a great play. I mean, again, you want to create a numbers advantage for your team with the Globus and then get the kill, and they were doing well. But them not getting the kill is a huge problem. 
On the other hand, they just killed Blaze without him having a chance to get the bunker out, but Brightwing also died. So yeah, it's getting a little bit crazy over here. Diablo is finally dead, but he has the souls. The only souls that he still has, you can see that he's still at 36. So these are the souls of the Blizzard executives that made the choices to kill HGC. They're so freaking evil that Diablo said like, yeah, no, I'm going to keep those. I'm not going to release that. Tigers has also fallen, and well, I guess the red team is again pulling a little bit farther ahead. They have now 24 against 16 in a moment. So a few more shots fired. 11 kills to 10. 21 kills in this game. And they're nearly evenly distributed. And the red team again trying to make their play for the additional camp here. With two heroes down on the blue team side, they are able to make that move. Can they finally take a bell tower though? That's the bigger question. A bit of bell tower control would go a long way for them right now if they can pull that one off. And at the bottom of the map, they got a chance! But Sylvanas is instead pushing into the middle. I would assume that she burns another wave down. Brightwing alone is not going to do the trick here. So, yeah. Doesn't risk anything. Immediately retreats. Spotlane has taken some damage. But nothing too crazy. All the way up at the top with more control on the map. They're also going for additional camp. It's still fairly even experience between the two teams here. And when we're looking at the dem... Oh, hello ETC. And he's dead again. ETC is down. Isolation connects with the Malfurion. But he already activated his tranquility. So that's not too big of a problem for them. 67,000 damage by Junkrat, 70,000 by Tychus, nearly level 20 now for Genshin Impact, and since they just got the recent kill, they drew even in kills with the blue team, so now they are having a great time at the bot lane as they're going for the first bell tower conversion of the game. And not only do they pressure the bottom of the map, they're pressuring the middle too. They try to go for false stat, there's the gust, but I'm not quite sure if that really helped them. <laughs> I don't think that was helpful. <laughs> First of all, false that dies. Second of all, everybody else dies too. So that gust, if anything, just sealed the deal on two more kills. And that is a disaster now for Team Easy Girl. They're really in trouble here. Because now we have not only one of the altars taken over, but they could get another one. They could go for boss. They have a double altar that they can take. Bell tower conversion in the middle is possible. Yeah, there's a lot that they can pull off here. This is definitely going to be single digits on the core of Team Easy Girl. First few shots are already fired. They're going for another hit here in the middle. And just a quick reminder, if they convert this one, get the channel at the top right, and then take the boss, it's game. All they got to do here. And they're looking at it. They're thinking about it. So now it would be six shots. And I'm actually lying. Sorry. Like math is hard apparently. They need to have the top, one at the top as well. So it's not quite. doesn't quite work out. ETC dies. I mean. They're losing too many heroes here. Yeah, they're staggering deaths. And math doesn't even figure into all of this any longer. Because it seems like they're going to get the top now too. And then the barrage would start. Junkrat can already convert this one over. They got so many opportunities here right now. And even with the attempt to counter play at the bottom of the map. I don't really think this is happening. So they get this one just before the... Yeah. It's not quite working out the way that they were hoping. They get the boss. They're putting the core on 1%. If they could have waited with the channel of one of the altars, they would have won the game now. But, yeah, either way. They are down to a single point. But they still got to get that one point. Which means they either have to take full control or they got to channel another altar. And by now, both teams have level 20. And, of course, on the one hand, you can say, like, 1 point to 24, obviously, that's game. But I've seen too many games on Towers of Doom where a team was behind by 30 points, even. And was still able to turn it in the late game after they were an even talent. So this isn't quite over yet. Obviously, Genshin Impact is currently in a dominant position. And the momentum that they have is just nuts. But we got some globals that should make it easier to recapture these bell towers. And there's always the chance to try and bring the battle back. So it's not impossible, but it's going to be tough. Now, if they're losing a few heroes right now, then it would likely be the end of it. And ETC already gets caught very, very quickly. 
Yeah, false that comes in too. They want that fight. They want the kills. The gust being used. Wind tunnel is out. We got 75,000 damage for Tychus. 80,000 for Junkrat. Altas activating. This is the fight, boys. And Tychus isn't here. He's playing on the left with a couple of the pumpkins that were threatening to end the game. So they had to put him there. They had to uh, put him in a position where he can stop them from finishing the game off. Now that he did, he can finally join the fight. But it's all about the altars now. 15 kills, 2e11. And this is the moment of truth. Do or die. The big red button, it has been pressed. Falstead, he's channeling on the left, so it can't be snuck by Genshin Impact. But they gotta win this team fight. This is the only way. This is the only way to try and still have a chance in this first game of the best of five series at the semifinal of the winner bracket. So off we go. They're heading straight into the battle, trying to get a quick kill. So far, that hasn't happened. Sylvanas is a little bit low. Still able to escape, though. Riptire is coming out, too. They go for ETC. He's isolated, and he's in real trouble. But Brightwing, the attempted assist, keeping him alive for a few more seconds. But this could be it. Brightwing jumps out. The Harker is the one that dies. They're trying the channel. Wind Tunnel is buying some time. The interrupt has happened. Diablo is dead. He has the souls. They can still try and flank in, which is exactly what Sylvanas is attempting to do. And it seems that ETC is going to fall next. ETC is down. Gonda flies out. This is... This has to be it. Four versus three. They're losing Tychus. Only two survivors. Diablo is back to business. And they are finishing what they started. Junkrat with the channel. And this is the lead in the series for Genshin Impact. They take the 1-0 in the best of five here at the Happy Gaming Cup. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two! Party time, everybody! Yep, here we are on the second map. It's Infernal Shrines. And again, they switched sides. So Genshin Impact is now playing from the left to the right. Previously, they played from the right to the left. They have the lead in this best of five series here at the winner bracket semifinal of the Happy Gaming Cup. And it's hammer time! Hammer time in every sense of the word. We got Sergeant Hammer and we got the man with the hammers, Murden, both for the blue team, with a bride being this time being played by them. So the former C8 team, so to say, is doing what they can here, going up against a Chinese Korean team on the right side. We got Taikas again, Jojo, Genji, Malthael, also trying to put up all the stops here. And will Team Easy Girl be able to force the tie before we're heading into game number three? Or is it going to be a 2-0 lead in this series for Genshin Impact? Now, they got now two heroes that can really deal with Mirrodin at the front line. They got not only Tychus with his minigun, but also, of course, Malthael. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what they can pull off with the two of them. They got Kane, the old man. Yeah, it's going full boomer on us, and we'll see what he can pull off. Oh, oh back in the day! With the stories. I assume they were gonna hear stories, not Lul Nado. It's all about making their ears bleed as much as you possibly can. But, uh, yeah, the good old days, the good old days. It's actually kind of crazy. Y you know all of these memes, right? Where they show you, for example, 15 pictures of stuff. Like, you're old when you know what this is. And they show you, like, stuff from your youth. And you think about it for just a second. And realize how much the world changes in just, like, 10, 20 years. It's absolutely bananas. But, yeah, it's kind of wild. It's like, I can still remember, like, back... Uh, the day, you know, all you had to give us when we were like playing outside was a stick. Give us a stick or a ball or whatever and we would find something dumb to do with it. Today it feels, uh, if it doesn't have a display, it's not interesting. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of wild. Yeah, and of course letters. Letters were a thing. I remember going to parties when I was, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 18. And like meeting girls, giving them my address, and they would write me a letter. That didn't happen a whole lot. Like that was already when, f when phones, when uh, mobile phones were just like emerging. So it was only for a short period. But that was actually a thing for a while. And you would give people your home number, not your f not your cell phone number. You didn't have cell phones. 
we had like bricks that we could sometimes carry around that were super heavy and the uh, uh, the battery lasted for like two hours but yeah so you would actually uh, get mail i still have some of those letters and honestly it's pretty cool to read through those be like oh yeah i remember this so it's kind of bananas but yeah uh either way we got still no kill in the game, so obviously for Easy Girl, they gotta step it up a little bit here, right? So uh, they gotta move in and start to take some names. Chew ass and uh, kick bubblegum. Uh, and they're all out of ass or bubblegum. But yeah, so we'll find out if the Koreans can uh, come through and now take maybe a bit of a lead here. I actually don't even know if there's a bit of a ping advantage or a ping disadvantage for the Koreans playing on the Chinese server. I would say probably not. I don't really think so. But, huh, actually kind of curious now. I would assume that the, the if there is one, then it's probably really going to be super small, super negligible. But yeah, either way, now with the first objective being up and the camps taken, so the stage is set for the first big team fight. Of course, the blue team, they still don't have the talent for Sergeant Hammer to give her a little bit more mobility, so she's pretty static right there. And also to go... Uh, regenerated by your steel, pretty much Nick's build, so not going into the siege tactics, which makes at least the first objective a bit more of a chore for her. But once the level 7 is in, the mobility is going to make things a lot easier for Sergeant Hammer. And we'll also see how much you can do with the regenerative biosteel. That's something that Nick introduced in the Western scene a long time ago. And now the Koreans are picking it up as well. Especially, of course, after the Heroes International in Miami. But, well, not only do we get an objective for the blue team, but we also get a kill just at the uh, back end of the fight. Malthael goes down. The aspect of death gets uh, deaded. And now they can push through the bot lane with Sergeant Hammer having access to the Hava Siege mode. So you will definitely have a little bit of a problem here with all of this. But yeah. We get a quick hit in on the wall. That thing gets destroyed within seconds. And now this fort is also going to get crushed. Too much push power if you have Sergeant Hammer in the back of the... Uh, of the pr pressure play here. And then on top of that, you have at the front the Punisher. And I mean, you can see how they're struggling with the Punisher in the first place. Not only did they lose their fort, but they're even losing more. Damn, they're nearly losing another hero. Tychus is about to go down, and so is Jojo. Both of them barely survive and allow Sergeant Hammer to get a few more shots in on the keep wall. So that is a mad victory right there for Genshin Impact in the early game. That's a great start for them. Now, of course, there's a few more heroes that also couldn't unfold their true potential in the first fight. The first to name is Tigers, who with level 10 is going to get Odin, which is a huge game changer for any fight over a shrine. I mean, there's a reason that he also in the Western scene gets picked a lot when you're playing on Infernal Shrines, and it's mainly Odin. There was always that rule of thumb that once you have 20 stacks on the objective, then you pop Odin. And it will help you to secure the rest of the objective fairly easily. Because nobody really wants to fight into Odin. So most people, or most teams would try and play around this a little bit. Delay, push back, just fall back a little bit. And then try and just sneak every now and then a couple of stacks with range abilities. And then re-engage once that Odin runs out of time. But yeah. Now, they are stealing a few of those camps away now too. I gotta say that Genshin Impact is really keeping the pressure up. Doing a very nice job now with all of that. Down to the bottom of the map though, we get still one camp, the second here in the middle. And they are really utilizing Sarge Nama as best as they can. Yeah, weaving in one order, taking after another, but here is the aspect of death. Death. Malthael. Is it going to be last rites? I would assume so. Yeah, but talking about the aspect of death... Is he going to be deaded again? Ah, he doesn't get Hanzo'd. Still has enough hit points, doesn't get Hanzo'd here. And with that, we now have Falling Sword! Alright! Apparently... Oh, and Lulnado! Lulnado is in the house. We got the Dragon Blade and we got the Falling Sword. So they are trying to go for Sergeant Hammer with a ult on a Jojo. Falling Sword was, has actually a very... Like, for a long time, Falling Sword, Sword was the talent to pick on her. And one of the main reasons for that was that the uh, the supports that were at that point in uh, meta were supports like Stukov, like especially uh, Anna, 
And they didn't really have proper escape tools. So with Jojo Falling Sword, not only did you have an escape tool if the shit hit the fan, but you also were able to put enormous pressure onto the backline and the support in particular, which oftentimes changed the course of all these fights. That was super interesting. But, well, we now have Tormented Souls on Malthael, so no last rides there. And, well, next fight is up. We have the altar announced, the shrine announced. So it's time to face the music. Time to figure out if they can win this one now they got their level 10 abilities. One kill is all that we got so far in this game and it's for the team that's in the lead here. But yeah, a little bit of zoning. Lulnado is in. There we go. And... Ah, there's the hits. Slowly coming through as Malthel pops his Tormented Soul and escape. The Entomb forced him to go for the ult here. Lul Nado. And, well, in comes Odin. Yeah, there's the big boy with the big guns. That's either Jimmy or Tychus, and then you got boom, 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 which is pretty much Sergeant Hammer. So, <laughs> hammer time, baby, now. Nah? Yep, there's the Sergeant down. That was a beautiful Lul Nado. Lul Nado for the win. Go down! Yeah, he's dead. No, yeah, he is. Got Hanzoed, and Muradin is also down. So they started with a kill. Well, they got a counter kill on Genji, but then now they lose Muradin too. So the hammer time got cut short on both ends. And it is the red team that is all of a sudden a little bit ahead here and might just be able to get that next objective. So yeah, they are fighting back tooth and nail right now in an attempt to ensure that Genjin Impact is not walking away with this best of five. Hanzo is still poking from a distance, so the blue team hasn't given up on that yet either. Good hit, could have been better, but at least they are focusing Tychus back a little bit. 30 to 33, guys, they haven't given up on this yet, and Sergeant Hammer is back. Nice and tomb, there's the kill, Lulnado making it difficult to engage, Leo is dead as Genji returns to the fight and quickly gets the drop on him. So, trade activated for Leoric, and it is the blue team that loses the second objective. But while the red team is able to lock the Punisher in, they also lost Malthael again. And on top of that, they also lost Genji. <laughs> and then he got killed. Oh boy, Hanzo. What happened there? Not like this. Beautiful. Let's check that again. Keep an eye on Hanzo. Hanzo. I got this! I don't got this! Help! <laughs> now we gotta give some credit obviously to Tychus who came in with the grenade here, but the final blow belonged to the Punisher and that is just too damn good. So, level 13 versus 13, even with the objective they weren't able to take another fort down, so the only fort that so far has fallen is the one at the bottom of the map on the red team side. As we've seen earlier with the first objective, with level 13 talents on both sides, we now got the super healing potion. And four kills to four. Very, very close series. Pretty much exactly what we expected here. I mean, this is honestly the big one. I, there's a good chance that whichever team loses here is going to make a bit of a loser bracket run as well. These are definitely two of the top teams in the tournament right now. Team Easy Girl aggressively moving in, attempting to, well, pressure the Ford in the mid lane just a little bit. The gate is already down, so you're doing what you can here. Yeah, Muradin jumping out. We got uh, 30,000 damage now for Tychus. We got 31,000 for Hanzo. Brightwing is the only one that hasn't died yet on the red team side. The only one that survived through all of it. Uh, fruit fly. But then again, Trying with they got Kane to lock in Muradin. Can't make it happen. The Lulnados have actually gotten a lot of value. I mean, I'm a little bit salty at anybody treating books like this, but at the same time, I gotta say, he had some good moments there. One time, he pushed Sachin Hammer away from the fight after the Entomb was uh, called down. So that really helped to keep at least one hero alive. The next time, when Sachin Hammer was actually killed, they were able to isolate her with Lonado, so uh, nice moves from Deckard Kane. I really like it. Normally it's the setup that you're trying to go with a stain while listen. But over here it makes things a bit more dicey. I like it. Pressure continues. And Mirinin also has to be cautious. <laughs> Genji. Zip! In out. Uh, missing the entomb here. And Genji is again doing the same thing. 
Always daring Brightwing a little bit to play around with the poly too. Now, there is, a, of course, the aspect of Johanna that we should mention too. If you have the blind and you properly use it against Sergeant Hammer, you can definitely, for a short period, limit her value pretty significantly. Level 16 talents, then again, are now kicking in, and that means that we are likely going to get additional damage for Sergeant Hammer. So that's going to be a thing. We got the Holy Renewal on top of this now too. Grenade build is continued and completed as we have the uh, Royal Focus build also completely done here. So timing couldn't be more perfect. Both of the teams get level 16 talents and the objective gets announced. So it's really time to get ready for this one. And since it is at the bottom of the map, there is a slight advantage for the blue team since they still have a fountain here. So this is going to give them a lead. Now in the mid lane, both of the teams still have a fountain available. So if on the way you want to tap for some hit points and mana, you can still do that even if you're on Team Easy Girl. But they are now pushing the bottom of the map to try and open this up. Make it a little bit more difficult for the opponent to retreat. And as it turns out, we get the mechanical know-how. Alright. So with that, we now have more survivability for Sergeant Hammer. Not necessarily the giant slayer that we uh, got, but you have the increased damage. So a little bit more on the timer, but for the short burst periods, you can definitely do a lot here. Just now it needs to make sure that uh, this is not the moment where, of course, where Georgia comes in with the blind. That would be a little bit of an issue. But yeah, either way, Sergeant Emma doing her best here. Position has been taken by the ooh, by the red team, and they get the kill. Leoric activating the trade. Tormented Souls is also up. They zone them out as best they can. And while the blue team has taken the lead on the stacks on the shrine, it's now Team Easy Girl who has the numbers advantage and also the position to pull ahead here. And that's exactly what they're doing. The poke continues on the other hand, and that was a great move. Everybody put into a corner. Jojo with a beautiful condemn. It leads to a double kill. Not only does Brightwing fall, but also Hanzo and an arcane punisher gets taken by Team Easy Girl. Nice! Now, there's a problem, and that's that another fort has just been eliminated by this push at the top, so the camp did work. Now, there's no denying that at the bottom of the map, things are not going all that well for the blue team. They're going to lose that fort, and it seems like they might lose Muradin too, and this is starting to become an issue, but he gets out! Nice! Good job! Wasting a lot of the time of Team Easy Girl. Had to pop his avatar, on the other hand. But they now need to do a little bit more. Now keep in mind, taking this fort down is nice. But they also lost the fort at the top. So nothing gained, nothing lost here. They need to do a bit more than that. And that's exactly what they're attempting to pull off at the bottom of the map. As they're now going for the wall, going for the towers. Punisher has been baited over as it should be. But at least taking the wall. I mean, taking the wall down is the minimum that they got to do here. That's pretty much what they're doing. Now the grenade is being hit. Gate is down, middle of the map. There was a bit more pressure by Malthale. It's, by the way, an awesome skill for Malthale. Absolutely love this one. It's one of the best skins. It is the best skin for him. Just hands down. For sure. Yeah, much better game also when it comes to uh, some of the, the mounts that we're now talking about here. I haven't seen a whole lot of poverty horses here. So the pleb horses are apparently in the stable. Been let out today. Ooh. Yeah, it's always a little bit annoying when you're missing it in two. Not the biggest cooldown, but still. We'll be back for the next fight for sure. I mean, the next fight, I mean, next objective. But yeah, level 16, safety in numbers. And the next objective is also going to be topside. So again, a lane where Easy Girl doesn't have a fountain. Which is a bit of a problem. Malthale with the wave cleared, yes. Yeah, they, they're gonna get level 20 very soon. It's a really nice game. I, I really like it because the entire time the red team is pulling ahead step by step, but it always feels that one good team fight can turn the game within seconds for Team Genjin Impact, and they're always very close to get these kills. So this is still a game that the blue team can decide in their favor and take that second win in the best of five series. But with level 20 in their hands, Team Easy Girl should try to be a bit more aggressive and maybe even push for the structure in the middle of the map. And I would assume that they're going to make a few moves like this. Now, 
for Martha, it doesn't really matter too much. I assume that he's going to get no one can stop death. And yes, so it doesn't really do anything for him right away. But for the other heroes, that's a different story. Especially when we're talking about Mr. Deckard Kane here with the Mornados. So he is going to use that quite a fair bit, and he should. He's made some nice moves with it earlier, and he's going to do the same thing again. With Odin getting popped within a second, I don't think there's a chance for uh, Genshin Impact to save their fort here. He's just using uh, the extra range and all of the tools to take this one easily. Now the attempt is still there by the blue team to safeguard the structure, but it's not a thing. And if Mirrodin isn't careful, he's going to get punished for it. Yep, he... well, yes, there it is! He got too greedy. They should have just let it slide, but they didn't. So now they're losing one of their heroes, Mirrodin. He popped Avatar, he died. And they are pushing in the middle. Two forts now eliminated on the side of the blue team too. And they are struggling. Now the good news for them is that by the time the next objective is up, they are at least going to have their own level 20. So they will fight with even talents against the boys on the side of Easy Girl. 72,000 damage for Tychus. Top damage in the game. Easily. Like way ahead of anyone else. Second highest is Hanzo. And of course we also have Genji and Sergeant Hammer to consider here but yeah the action is definitely running in favor of easy girl they are making all the choices right now it's gonna change a little bit now that level 20 is available but there's still a head start on the objective that they get because of all of this and yes there we are eight to four so with that we have leading kills we have the talents still the same and i think they're giving this up yeah, they're not even going for it. Instead, they're trying to get a couple of camps, hope that they can get some pressure in the mid lane, maybe even at the bottom of the map with another one here, and then they will try and defend their keep. So this is a big opportunity for Easy Girl to get ahead in keeps at the top. And they know this too, so they're actually delaying this a little bit. They're realizing what's happening and that Team Genshin Impact isn't making any attempt at contesting it. So they get their own camp, they delay the objective by a little bit, and now they're just going to time it so that they have not only a Punisher move through the top lane, but also on top of that, the camp itself. So, yeah. With that, bottom of the map, still there's the pressure. So they're starting to try and take this one down. We have the top lane moves too. And that is now definitely threatening the main structure here. So a couple of nice attempts by Genshin Impact to apply pressure on the mid and the bot lane. Which could definitely be successful. But this is of course threatening to potentially also take down the entire game. It all depends on how quickly they can go through the wall. If they can get another kill or not. But that's exactly what they're going to be aiming for here. We got the Ultra Capacitors now. We also got the invisible friends, and well, it's party time! Here we go! Keep is definitely a goner. No chance of saving that. But at the same time, Team Easy Girl is suffering hit point losses at the keep at the bottom of the map too. So here's the opportunity, but that Punisher gets burned down very quickly. So that fort in the middle of the map is starting to lose hit points. The keep at the bottom of the map is also a little bit in trouble, but should be saved. And because of that, the red team is about to retreat. But Hanzo is doing his thing, comes in straight away also with the bullseye to follow up his initial stun with the arrow. Battle isn't over yet, it's all about whether or not you can kill a hero here. But with them buying more and more time, there's the Entomb, the Buried Alive! And Tychus is dead. Nice! Tychus down, Leo survives and all of the structure... Oh, another stun! <laughs> They're starting them out again. They're making another move. If they could have gotten a second kill here, boy oh boy, would that have been a problem for Team Easy Girl. And they already lost a lot here. I mean, again, that bot lane keep might even fall. I think it will. That catapult is doing work. Question is, can the minion wave take it down in time? This one is also super low. So the blue team, they have a lot of angles right now. Ooh, one more shot. It's not enough. Nope, nope, nope. The minion wave saved the day, but only until Sergeant Hammer is making an appearance here. They should get both. They're going for the fort in the middle of the map first. This one's gone. No chance. Can't make it happen. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, they still got the keep. But 
if you think about it, at the end of the day, it was more or less a win for the blue team. Oh, I'm talking about the win for the blue team. They're going for Malthale again. But he, what? He survives. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, well, apparently really nobody can stop him. He somehow survives twice in a row with pretty much no hit points. And they are able to retreat through the gate. But that was bananas. He should have fallen there for sure. Now, Sachin Hammer by now is at 73,000 damage. They're trying to go for Genshin again, but the fight hasn't even stopped yet. Leo! Yeah, it gets saved. Well done. But over here, it seems like this is going to be the end of Muradin again. And he's been crushed a bit in the last few fights. So this is the third time that he has fallen here. Tigers is now at 88,000 damage. Obviously, all of the percentage damage doesn't make it any easier if you're the front line of the blue team. But there's another camp that gets claimed. And it seems that they are hoping to apply pressure at the bottom of the map and maybe even get keep number two. That would go a long way and they're not afraid, they're not hesitant. They're dropping Odin immediately. Without Murden, there's also a lot of CC of course that's missing and they can just keep Tychus back here, do the damage. They are not afraid of the Buried Alive either, especially of course with Deckard Kane who can easily drop the Lulnado which he does frequently. So things are looking currently very, very good for them. But they might not be able to take that keep after all. Sergeant Hammer in particular is pushing them back time and time again and making it very difficult to engage. I just want to highlight this real quickly. So this should be cleaned up. But if they can keep their attention at the bot lane just a little bit longer, then those catapults would have arrived at the core. So they retreated before that happened. The shrine is also active, which is the main reason why they are now moving back. It gives them a head start. If they claim... Uh, this one is likely going to end the game. If you're looking at the bottom of the map, at the minimap, and you see both of these keeps pretty much with no hit points, this one should end the game. So whoever wins the objective has the opportunity to put a point onto the board, and that's what we're going to see here. Yeah, nice initial hit. They're jumping in deep. Buried Alive is out again, and the immediate engage from Jojo. Leo is down. Mirrodin in trouble. There comes the blade. They're trying for the kill. They can't get it just yet, but Sergeant Hammer is in the choke point, and Genji seals the deal. Genji gets the kill. Brightwing is down. The fruit fly got eliminated and they are making their way towards the core. Not even bothering with the objective anymore. They have everything they need. The ults are coming back. Especially true for Tychus and his Odin. This should be it. 12 stacks by the way on his level 4. Master Assassin is not going to be completed. He actually has to be careful that he doesn't get killed here. But yeah, that core doesn't stand a chance. With only two survivors, there's no way they can defend this. The shield is burned through within a second. And they are just obliterating that core. We got a series on our hands, everybody. This is going to be a 1-1 in a few seconds as we are heading into game number three. Or at least it should be. It's still need to right-click it to death. But yeah, even with Murden now back to business, this is, there's no way they're losing this. Muradin is dead again, so is the core. And that's a tie in the series. The best of five continues with game number three as we are moving on to the next map of the series. Game number three, Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, here we go, guys. We got Team Easy Girl against Genshin Impact on the third map of the series in his best of uh, five. Now, again, they swapped sides. This is a theme. This is a thing. We talked about it before. Easy Girl is now on the left. Genshin Impact is on the right. So our Koreans are now playing on the left side again. Hyde on Anduin and Gonda on Junkrat in this case. Yeah, we got Team Starcraft over here, at least a little bit. Blaze and Tykes on the same. And over to the right side of the map, it is Genshin Impact with their two globals again. This time they have Sylvanas too for a little bit more pressure, but they like their birdie. Uh, Polly wants a cookie. Cookie. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Well, yeah, different voice, but still. So, I want a cookie too. Oh, like it's honestly annoying, like especially with the cycling races and all of the stuff that I'm doing, obviously keeping track of my weight is a big thing. And Christmas definitely didn't help with this, but right now I am just so in favor of getting cookies and stuff. And yeah, I could eat cookies all day, but at the same time, 
the only one that that makes happy in the long run is all of the boys that I'm cycling with because it drags me down on the climbs and yeah so now that Christmas is over and the holidays are over I gotta step it up a little bit also talk about stepping it up what is this shit you go for stitches you go for a great skin and then you play that shitty lizard really the standard version are you kidding me I mean come on bro if you're already putting some money and effort into getting a proper skin for your hero then what is that it is insane so yeah but well yeah it is what it is yeah so on the left side i'm hearing a lot by the way lately again about like this fat acceptance bullshit and all of this crap i mean have you guys followed this, this is actually insane apparently now if you don't like to be fat now uh, also as a fat person if you lose weight if you for example say like hey i want to lose some weight i want to get in better shape that makes you apparently now uh the new word is fat phobic which is apparently also a racist i'm like what like i heard this like this popped up multiple times over the last two weeks people are fucking brain dead lately how about trying to be a little bit healthy it's just insane like the shit that people come up with these days to paint themselves as victims and oppressed is just mind-blowing the internet is a dark place honestly we should just take everybody's phones away and go back to landlines and see what happens but yeah it's insanity the bullshit these times it's crazy. But yeah, either way, I still have to lose two kilos. Then I'm in my fighting weight. That's, that's The first races are starting like six weeks or so. And until then, I want to lose at least one. And then I'm all right. One, one and a half, something like that. in Gucci. But yeah, I thought it was already bonkers when Adela lost so much weight and she got attacked for it. But apparently, I, I thought it was the end of it. I thought at some point we all agreed that this is just bullshit and these people need to shut the fuck up. But apparently they got emboldened even more and now they're running around explaining to everybody that they're fat phobic. <laughs> yeah, I am fat phobic when I'm on a plane. When I'm on a plane, I'm very fat phobic. If that fat guy comes in that needs two seats and I'm sitting in the corner, then yes, I am very fat phobic. I have a phobia of sitting next to that guy which is yeah that, that is a thing and i will absolutely admit to that no problem whatsoever i mean who isn't so yeah but all right either way uh let's see what stitches can pull off right now because with our boy stitches we'll have a follow-up and it is called the jet propulsion so once that we're having uh, blaze following up on a hook and maybe then even afterwards ah uh, actually I was about to say, maybe even afterwards Junkrat. So Junkrat can of course also contribute pretty heavily to isolating a target. But the one thing that I didn't even uh, account for a second ago was that we have Ando in here too. So you could really keep Ando in a little bit farther in the back, get the hook, get a gorge out, and then Ando in comes in with a pull and you isolate the target even further. So that would actually be pretty sweet. Now if they go down that route or not, that's a different story. We'll see if that happens. We... Yeah, time will tell. I mean, we got the crybaby in, Anduin is riding on the plat horse, he doesn't deserve anything better, so I'm totally okay in that case with it. Both teams trying to turn in, so far we haven't seen kills, but yeah, it's a party. 18 to 12 gems that have been delivered. Mid lane has been very nicely taken down by Team Easy Girl. So they were able to uh, win the last map and tie the series. In comes the hook, okay, Diablo, careful, gets hooked straight into Tychus. But it nearly turned on Tychus, and that could have been a problem. So, yeah. All the way up towards the top, we got Falstead, Global, obviously. They got two, I said it before. But that could, in the, the late game, have a pretty big impact. It's a smaller map, it's not really the biggest map. So normally when you have the Globals running, they're your macro. It's more about big map control, but in this case, not quite. Anduin, he's down! The Crybaby, he's dead. And at the same time, they're hoping for a counter kill, but instead it's... Uh, Diablo, not like this. No, and what did you just do? Why didn't you kill him? Because he would have died too. I know, I know. Okay, that was a bit weird. So first of all, Diablo kind of saves Stitches with the overpower. Then Stitches thinks, hey, I want to die. Hook somebody in who doesn't kill him. And then everybody walks away and nobody falls with the exception of Anduin. <laughs> it was a bit of a weird one. That was definitely a weird battle there. But, okay. So, towards the top, we now have Junkrat still pressuring this out. The red team was the first one to get the Webweavers in. They got the first kill, they got the first objective. 
So now let's see if they can also take some structures down because their gate in the middle already got destroyed. So at least they want to draw even. Sylvanas could be a huge asset here. And they are going down to the bottom of the map to apparently pressure that. I mean, imagine them getting a kill on Blaze here. Whew. If he gets a good drag off just as Sylvanas comes in, then damn. You need that tongue, baby. All right, show us those skills. All the girls have been talking about it, baby. Nah, not like that. Nah, no, no, no. That's not the skills we're talking about, bro. So yeah, he missed that one. But with the help of Sylvanas, he should still be able to take that fort down. The play in the middle, on the other hand, I mean, again, they're pinning the rest of them down. So that means that the top can also do a whole lot of damage. That's actually way more damage in total than I expected them to pull off here. Sylvanas, on the other hand, is losing 12 gems. So that hurts. Blaze also died, and he had 20, so... win? I mean, red team is probably going to be happy with this. Yeah, and if they get another one here, they're going to be very happy with this. They're going for the crybaby, and Anduin is 100% going to die, and so is Taika. So that's three kills in total that they got here. They annihilated a lot of the gems that the blue team was holding. Genshin Impact, the Chinese team, damn, they're doing well. And now at least the Koreans are trying to bring it back by eliminating Dehaka. He's not going to get out of this one. This is not happening. They have to be careful that he can't tunnel away here, but that's 10 gems that they're losing. Obviously, they're trying to also make sure that they're wasting a little bit of time. You don't want to be killed by Anduin. That is just adding insult to injury. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, okay, it's the grenade, so they showed some mercy here. It's only adding insult to injury when you're taken down by a guy that doesn't even know how to properly hold a sword. I mean, Arya has been teaching us over and over again, sticking with the pointy end, but Anduin didn't even learn that lesson. Instead, he throws light bubbles around. So, yeah. Varian regrets the moment that he gave him a flashlight. So, yeah. But again, we got four kills to two. So, 56 gems in the hands of the blue team. They still have an opportunity to get a turn in themselves. And at least initially, they were the ones to take that one down. <laughs> yeah, that was close. The Haka with good reaction time. Could have been a little bit of a problem. But here we go. He's moving away from this one. Okay, they're trying to re-engage. In the middle, hello. The hook! The gorge! And now they just need to take the Haka down. Where's that trap when you need it? Nice gust attempt. I don't think it's going to help them. Nope, that Ancestral just came too late. He was a little bit stingy on it. Thought he could do it without. And now it's going to... Whoa, False said what? False said surviving. I mean, Diablo died, but False said at least lived. It looked like False said would fall too. I think he might have just been able to come in. And... Yeah, well... Drop the Riptire on the edge. Maybe that would help, but nah, not quite. So it's not all over for the blue team yet. They lost a lot when the first objective was claimed by the red team. But now there's a chance for Easy Girl to take a few structures down. They already did some damage in the middle. They dropped the gate at the top, at the bottom of the map. Eh, bit of damage has been done, but nothing significant. It is, at the end of the day, now all about the way that they're playing it out with the Web Weavers. They should at least get the fort in the middle, and I think that's a no-brainer, because this thing is already down to 50% HP. No way of saving that. More so of what else can they do. So, they get the level 13, the red team. They get most of the blue team focusing onto the top lane now. Sylvanas is already dealing with the bottom of the map, and Tychus, he's escorting them in deep, and even attempting to flank now. So they are coming through that gate, really trying to do a number on them. Nice attempt at a jet propulsion, but it got shut down by the tongue. And Blaze had to go for his ult. Uh, talking about ults. Ancestral had to be used too. Dehaka pushing away. Oh, he's really soaking tons of damage here. I mean, damn. He ate a lot. Ancestral essence, everything got popped by him to survive. Ad adaptation too. Went for adaptation on level 10, it really tells here. So now the top fight continues. Two forts have been destroyed by the blue team now, and they pulled ahead in experience. The battle isn't quite over yet, as they're still hoping to flank in and maybe get some hits. No, not yet. It's also kind of surprising to see how Easy Girl is nearly on the same amount of gems as Genjin Impact. Not quite, but they are very, very close. And these hooks are now more and more dangerous as level 13 
has also increased the range of the hook, has extended that whole thing. They're of course trying to turn in right now, while at the same time claiming their camp on the right side of the map. But yeah, 15 on the board, another hook! They're throwing them out one after another now, really just trying to threaten them while they turn in. And they have enough gems for a full turn in. So yeah, that's the interesting part here. 32 have already been delivered. Now we have another 20 by Blaze, which means three more and they got the second wave. And also, of course, they safeguarded all of the gems that they've been holding, which is super important here, too. If all of a sudden Genshin Impact is starting to turn up the heat again and get some kills in, at least they're not going to lose anything. So, really nicely done. By the way, this also, pretty sweet move, good rotation, allowing that minion wave to do additional damage. Blue team is getting a turn in, but... Nah, Blaze is fine, here's the bunker. Doesn't even have to use the ult here. And they go for the Gorge, and he gets, that's the end of play that I've been talking about earlier. Now, Sylvanas is about to get away, or might, not sure yet, yeah, okay, they see her, but she is able to get out. But she's super low, the problem that she has now is that she needs to get healing. So they're trying to heal her up so that she can help with the defense. But the Harker gets hooked again, him going for adaptation honestly saved him so many deaths here. Time and time again, he has to pop it all. Essence, adaptation, then you get some ancestral and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Another hook comes in, and that's Diablo in trouble. The ancestral helping him out. That's the web weavers coming through the middle and the top lane. The fight isn't over yet. Both of the two players, at least, on the side of the red team are already incredibly low, but also the Arca is in trouble. And this time, this time, Sylvanas is dead, and that is 29 gems gone. 29 gems have just now been eliminated and talking about eliminating things easy girl is going for the easy hit on the keep in the middle of the map this is trouble real trouble keep gone that would be i mean that's a massive step forward for easy girl they still have a fort in the middle of the map so this would be continuous catapult pressure in favor of the blue team now they get it they take also the fort at the bottom of the map and this is pretty much all that you can expect from uh, an objective here. So this is great for them. Absolutely fantastic. And they still have 18 gems. Now there's a turn in opportunity for the red team. They got a chance. And that is, well, a thing. But now we got a 5 kills to 4. Another hook. <laughs> Trying to go for the... Trying to go for another thingy. Gorge. <laughs> Stitches is hungry. I mean, who isn't? He looks at... Honestly, Stitches is just looking at heroes on the other side and he just sees food. I don't know what Sylvanas is. Like, Rega. I shouldn't have started this. Somebody's a kebab, somebody else is a chicken or something. Like, I don't know. But either way, so it went for Sylvanas. Couldn't really get her. Once again, we're having them uh, with a push on Diablo, and that poor boy is really in trouble. Time and time again, he's just a sponge. Just a damage sponge all over the place. But they are turning it, so they can keep him alive, and they can kill Blaze. Which is also kind of noteworthy, because thanks to the Wailing Arrow, he was never able to get his bunker through, and that's kind of important, because they completely locked him out. If he gets his ult through, then that's a completely different battle. And now there's a chance to finally turn those gems in, get another Web Weaver wave, and then maybe turn the game around. So, yep, there's the kill. Rega is dead. Rega is down, and, well, they isolate Diablo again, and this time he might not make it. Does he have another hook? Oh, he doesn't even go for him. He tries to go for another one. Damn, they're getting a little bit greedy over here. One kill is not enough, apparently. Red Web Weavers are going to be descending. They have to deal with the bot lane too as Siege Giants are pushing through that. And at the same time, we have all... Ugh, look at these poor Web Weavers. There's a lot of walking. Those Web Weavers are coming down. They're like, are you shitting me? They're looking at the minimap and it's like, guys, 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 guys. Really? Really? Other side of the map? I have to walk all the way? All the way! I might have six legs, but this is stupid. This is really stupid. So, yeah, those Web Weavers are not happy. Red Team is also not happy because they don't have the healer with them. 
So they can't really engage into these fights. They already lost the Webweaver in the middle of the map, but the top it lost half HP. Likely they're gonna get at least a fort here, but does that even count? I and mean, then that's absolutely nothing, so I guess not. Six kills to five, level 19 to 19. And only one team has lost the keep. The hooks! He's doing a great job with these hooks. I mean, they are hit. At ah! Not like this! The synergy. Wah, wah. Yeah, that was a little bit weak. That gust just as Diablo pops the lightning breath. You want to get a little bit more damage out of that. But I guess better safe than sorry place right here. They used the cooldowns, but they didn't lose anybody. Now, the blue team. They haven't turned in since they got the last objective. But they are trying to fight this one out. And here comes the light bomb. And that hit connects. But as we said before, especially the Haka, he is just a sponge. Now, Anduin is cheating as usual and just pulling targets out. I mean, he is the pullout king after all. So nobody pull... Look at him, look at him. He does it again. Time and time again. That He is the master when it comes to that. And he does a great job here making sure that his front line is alive. They are waiting for level 20. And this is not going to be a thing. Are you fucking with me? <laughs> are they really trying to pay the fight here? There's no way. There's no way. Really? Against the big red button? Okay. I was about to say, that would be a crazy Hail Mary. This is a play that you all normally execute maybe on Sky Temple. But I would have been shocked to see them really committed. So they're nibbling around the edges a bit. We got 77,000 damage by Tigers. And, well, in addition to that, with both teams now on level 20, we also got a lot more mobility since they went for a couple of uh, blinks. So we got the Hellgate, and we also have the Bolt of the Storm here for Sylvanas. Anduin hasn't made a move yet, but they are really going for it. They've been playing around this for a while now, and Stitches might get a hook, but they are going to get this, so there's a good chance that they are going to. So yeah, they're knowing what's happening, but uh, they know what's happening, but Genshin Impact is going to claim this one. They are too late! They're too late to the party. So, yeah, Foil Set is already flying. They're trying to force them into a battle as well. Goes for the gas. Junkrat gets saved. Here comes the Hellgate. Damn, they're aggressive. Holy shit, they really want them now. Oh my god. They're diving deep. Maybe a little bit too deep, but they take the kill. They get Tychus. Tychus is down, and they are hoping for more. Anduin late with a pick, but he goes for the inner fire. This seems like they could turn this around. I mean, uh, that's getting dangerous. Now, there's catapults in the middle of the map. We're 18 minutes in. They could hurt the core. But at the top, with Sylvanas, they destroy that keep. Bottom of the map, another push where we see another lane in trouble. But this is getting a little bit nasty now. Catapults are on the core. Third catapult is coming in. So the shield is soon going to fall here. But can they defend? That's the question. They don't have Tychus. They don't have Tigers, they go for the bird, and they are able to get the kill. Falstead is dead, but the core is losing hit points, and I don't think they can save this. How the hell? Genjin Impact with a turnaround. They're going for the core, and they take it down. The lead in the best of five series for Genshin Impact as they take down Easy Girl on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Game number four, let's go! Genshin Impact with a monster boss towards the end of Tomb of the Spider Queen. Nice job. I mean, it honestly looked like they were losing the game and then they were able to sneak that boss in and then they went for it. And now in game number four, the first match point for Genshin Impact, we all of a sudden have, for Team Easy Girl, a Jimmy. Yeah, Jim Rayner is in the house. All right. On the left side, we got the Chinese, this time a Nuburak, Malthael, Hogger, triple frontline. Whereas Team Easy Girl with our two Koreans, Gondon, Mayev, and Hyde is playing Lucio. Okay, let's see if they can tie it up again and bring us to a final map in its best of five series. But yeah, there is a loser bracket by now, so that means whichever team loses here is not out of the tournament just yet. But of course, you want to make it straight to the winner bracket final. 
And that is the next stop for whichever team wins in this one. Now Malthael at the bottom of the map right away. Jimmy is going into the ace in the hole as his level 1 choice. Jimmy is always fun. One of the first characters that got introduced to the game. Positioning was everything. I loved when he had a big place in the meta on maps like Battlefield of Eternity. I really liked that. But right now, he's very rarely played. And to be honest, when he is played, he usually sucks. <laughs> It's kind of sad, actually. I mean, there are, of course, examples of where he uh, does a great job and where he really comes through for the team, but oftentimes when he's picked nowadays, he is more of a liability than anything else. One of his biggest problems was always survivability and just not having any mobility at all that he could use to dash out of the fight. Vala at least has her vault. Jimmy has a bit more sustain, but still. We'll see how it pans out for them here. They have the auto attacks. And we've seen some great stacking also by some of the players that did it in the past and just played different builds that were more focused on getting stacks on the level 1 and of course the level 4 where you could still lock the behemoth armor in. But right now it's all about damage control for Team Easy Girl. They want to make sure that they are locking a victory in on this map and then advance to the next one. Uh, but for the blue team, there's an opportunity to end the series right here. And I want to highlight Anubarak real quickly because he's the one that can always be a bit cheesy on this map. Masquerade is one of the players that pioneered this in Europe and did this a lot. They picked whenever they could with team um, Anubarak so that they were able to sneak in the objective. And the way that you do that is pretty simple. You just simply walk over with Anubarak to uh, whichever camp is active. You spawn a couple of beetles that distract the grunts and then you get the channel through. So you can solo the camp and apply pressure. And if the opponent isn't ready for it, it can really catch them off guard. But even if they are, they always have to keep somebody on the map shadowing Anubarak so that he cannot easily pressure them that way and get a head start on the objective. So I'm not sure if this is a thing that's also common on the Chinese server here, but I suppose that we are going to find out now. But yeah, prisoner camps are going to activate in just a little bit and then we'll see what they can pull off with the new Burak or if they are maybe making move. Oh, look at that. Love is in the air, or on the ground. Okay, at the top we now have Malthael against Urel. Cams are active, we're gonna keep our eye on Nubarak once that it happens. I mean, he's already pretty close to it, so it might be a thing that he is going to attack fairly soon here. Uh, down at the bottom of the map we now have also Rega trying to go for the extra wave clear with his lightning shield. And is he gonna make a move? Nah, not just yet. Can't be that aggressive and that obvious, but it's definitely something that they have up their sleeves. So, for the time, we have Top still pressuring. Everybody else is just playing through the middle. And it seems like the red team is very aggressive around the objective. Normally the teams are at least waiting until they have level 7 talents until they're making a move, but Jimmy is dead. Yeah, this was Jimmy. So Jimmy is down easily taken apart and it allows the blue team to go for the channel on the prisoners. Not sure if they can get the entire thing but the level 7 talent definitely helped them too. Good tether on Rega who still tries to make his way out of this one but he's caught on the wrong side of that fight. So he jumps back in, knows that he's going to die eventually. They have 11 seconds left on the timer. Level 7 now for both teams, which means unstable compound after the fight or flight. Let's see if they can do a little bit more here, now that the red team is apparently willing to also commit to the attack. They're going straight for the first grunt and take it down, and now the channel has started. Rega is back, interrupts happen for just a moment, but the first objective is now being threatened by Easy Girl. I haven't seen it in a long time, by the way, where a team was just trying to sneak it in the back. We had this a uh, few times in HGC even. But, yep. Yeah, so here we are. Quick hit. They're trying to retake this. They still have the lead. Alright. In there we go. They make a move for Jimmy again. He was already in trouble a bit earlier, but this time he comes in with a penetrating round. And that's the end of Anubarak. The beetle goes down. A noob got wrecked. Two kills to one for Team Easy Girl as the Chinese-Korean team is trying to make their way back into this. Now again, if you missed it at the beginning, the one thing I want to highlight about Genshin Impact is also that it's pretty much the old C8 team, which you should be familiar with. Uh, definitely one of the favorites in this tournament. I mean, both of these teams are quite strong. 
and have a chance of winning the whole thing here. So them meeting in the winner bracket semi-final already is a bit of an anomaly. Camps are taken. This is one of the strongest cam on all the maps. Maybe with the exception of the Sentinel on Hanamura that we've seen in... I think it was the previous series, the other winner bracket semi-final. So yeah. Meridian is attempting to safeguard the camp. It's 11 to 14 seconds. And of course this is the winner takes all. Uh, they get some stuns out. And Nuporak needs to be careful because he's all of a sudden finding himself getting attacked very quickly. The focus fire was absolutely on point here. Oof, my F, Gonda. Yeah. Bot lane, at least Malthel was able to do some damage here, but they are falling back onto the camp as the blue team is just not letting up on the pressure. They're always trying to sneak back in and take it. Camp is still active in the middle of the map for the red team though, so that is giving them a bit of a lead here. But yeah, they really want this. Yorel, the space goat has to jump out, has to retreat. Muradin, the same thing. So they are all jumping out and giving up the position. But the camp is pushing into the mid lane now, so if it's unintended, then this wall will fall. And they're realizing it too, which is why Horga is now retreating. And the rest of the team is also falling back. Given the build that we're seeing here, we could see the exact same player on Malthael that we already had in the previous game. And oh, okay, that's a kill. Talking about Malthael, he is dead. Yeah, the aspect of dead is doing a lot of dying today. Not only in this series, but also in the previous one. We got the arrow now. Hanzo yolos it out right away. Gets the stun. They're playing a 4 versus 5 here. But they're attempting to prevent them from grabbing the objective. And they're also forcing the ult out for Yurel, who now has to retreat. Malthel hasn't made a choice yet. But will soon. And they forced him back successfully. Even with a numbers disadvantage. Tormented souls. They really don't like that last rights a whole lot. It's a lot of tormented souls that we've now gotten in uh, this tournament from them. Okay, down to the bottom of the map. Hogger, the spin to win. And Anubarak, yeah, gets a stun and dives out. They really want to squash the Beatles. Should have called themselves the Exterminators. Camp is claimed, so this is actually an advantage now for the blue team. If they can continue that fight and just push it over to the red side and attack the camp, then that camp in the middle of the map that they just attacked there will do a lot of damage because the red team has so far failed to get their own and the more time they can buy now the better for them not only because of the push in the middle of the map but also because the red team is losing out on some potential pressure so it's actually pretty good for them and Marthael is helping this out even further but they need to keep the beetle alive and Rega does exactly that with a well-timed ancestral maybe he would have gotten out without it but you don't want to chance it there so yeah the camp is doing some work they're not falling to uh, the objective yet. But I'm actually a little bit surprised how aggressive both teams are around the objective. Usually you see this a little bit less. So, yeah. We already have another move made on the left side. There is... And Gage Kiss is trying to poke them slowly and steadily. He needs to be very careful. I mean, he's the prime target. If Reyna gets at any point attacked and stunned, then the follow-up could be absolutely devastating, especially with the Horda pulled there being in, so they can dive in with the Nubarak, with Hogga, and really pressure that back line. That's where you have then Mayev and also Rel come into play. There's a lot of control, potentially, at least for the red team, that they could use here. Everybody is still a bit hesitant of committing completely to the fight just now. Hoping for just an opportunity. There's no globals involved in the game either. Previously, we've seen a lot of faults set in the Haka. I like this. Again, the camp is taken again. This is the second time that they're able to claim this camp without the red team doing the same thing. So this is actually pretty nice. And now that the red team is doing a move to uh, the top right, I think we're going to see maybe even the objective taken because that's going to take them a couple of seconds seconds in which the blue team is pushing so they're already on the camp they're diving in trying to get the damage here only a three-man defense the camp has been claimed but they're taking unnecessary damage and that's a huge problem they're going for your L. arrow is out ult has also been used but everybody's low so them going for the camp just a little bit later cost them a lot and they're even losing lucio now it was a five versus three initially they lost a lot of hit points and now they're getting punished for it and it might lead to the first objective claimed in this game nicely done by the blue team genshin impact with a great job here 
the smooth transition and the quick rotation towards the mercenary camp made it difficult for Easy Girl to keep up. And now they lost in total. Three heroes we have. And again, Maiev eliminated. The objective claimed. And the wall in the middle is already opened up at the bottom of the map. It's a similar thing. But this was really cool. It was such a small margin. Such a small window of opportunity. They used it perfectly. Easy Girl realized that the camp was taken. That Hogger was missing. That they were on it. And they said, guys, we have to take our own. They sent their heroes over. It's too late. They definitely lost too much time there. And then the defense were on the objective. Cost them a lot of hit points. Abilities that they already use. And once that it really unfolds in a 5 versus 5 fashion. They're just too low. And uh, they have to pay the price. So now we have half level lead. They're getting structural damage in. Hogger is also coming in to take waves down back here so they can do more damage on the fort. But that is more or less two forts that are being eliminated here. Right, Cocoon is out as they're trying to retreat. Up at the top, the pressure is still on. So yeah, they're doing mad work. This fort can't really be counted anymore. And up at the top, now we got also uh, Kali pushing again for this one potentially. We have still another quick hit here. Just a bit of poking is all that they need to drop this too. And then more catapults are going to spawn. Mayev is still at the bottom of the map because she has to defend there. They had to abandon the top lane. So they might even end up in a situation where they lose every single fort right now. Yeah, that is tough. Up at the top. Yeah, this one's gone. This one is 100% gone. So another fort falls. They're still pushing in the middle. The disc is out in Anubarak. They're starting to dive in. And even with that quick ancestral, Anubarak might still fall. But I would still call worth it. Yeah, Anubarak goes down. You got two forts for it. And the third one, as I said, is pretty much gone. I mean, that's no hit points left whatsoever. So both of the teams now still on even experience. But that was huge. This attack with the first objective was a big win for them. And now both teams are just making a play for the boss. We have it at the bottom of the map as Jimmy is coming in with three more players. And at the top the same thing is happening from the blue team. So they're not wasting any time whatsoever. We have them coming in straight with Hanzo and the rest of the boys. And this is of course going to be sent straight towards the keep. And in the middle of the map as you would have expected this fort has fallen. The camp did the honors. And now they just got to decide how they want to play this. And they're going for defense. They're all moving back. They're trying to save their fort at the bottom of the map. Next objective is announced too. So the pressure is definitely there. But this is... This is rough for Amy girl. Keep in mind, this is a match point for the blue team. Genshin Impact, they have a match point here. So any damage that they can do is technically a little bit too much. So, yeah. They are likely... They are definitely going to lose a tower or two. And down at the bottom of the map, yes, the wall has also been destroyed here. But as long as they can keep the fort, they're going to be fine. I mean, Hogger even moved so far back that he's now attacking this one as well. And Nuburak has already thought about cheesing this out a little bit, as explained earlier, but didn't. Yeah, Gate and tower are both destroyed. So this one's opened up for a potential push with another objective. Maybe even just after a fight. And they're diving back out again. Now it kills Easy Girl, they have the additional kill, but just look at the minimap pressure on the top in the bot lane. That already gives you an idea of what's going on here right now. And as time continues and catapult scale, this is gonna be another issue. And again, they take the camp. This is the beauty of having Hogger in the mix. You have somebody that can take camps in a very, very reasonable time frame, especially when he gets a little bit of an assist. So they're pushing for the next objective. Try to push the red team back. They, of course, have also vision on Jimmy up at the top. Uh, trying again for the channel. Rega. And they get it. So, time's ticking. Easy girl under even more pressure. Especially, of course, Lucio gets hit by the Hanzo arrow. Hogger comes in from behind. They're buying themselves a little bit more time on the objective. The hits keep coming, but the fight, they gotta be careful around it. 22 seconds. The camp in the middle of the map is doing a great job. Also, the Ancestral from Rega on point. Yeah, absolutely on point here. But Hanzo gets killed. Easy girl fighting back. But they're losing Jimmy. Jimmy is dead. And guess what? They're losing Gonda too. 
Maev is down and Malthael, he's not stopping. Malthael is going for the next kill. Kill steal from Hogger as he goes for the triple. And they opened the map up in the mid lane. Yep, the gate is gone. The towers are falling. The objective is about to be channeled again. Genshin Impact with the momentum. They try to go for the next one. They push through it for another key potentially. Once that they're getting the objective here, they should be able to push at least one keep and take it down. If not more than that. I mean, already you're having damage right here as this one is dropping hit points slowly. But at the top of the map, a similar picture is unfolding as the final tower has been destroyed. And now it is time for the cavalry to appear again. Let's go. This is going to be the moment where easy girl have to step up and it's going to be made even more difficult by the fact that the blue team is about to get level 20. yeah that is gonna be a, there has to be a hell of a defense it's gonna be difficult i mean even if you just take two keeps down that's two armor shields removed on the core and then if you take a boss if you pressure later it might just be the end of you so here we are. This is the opportunity. Malthale pushed out the top lane a little bit. They got level 20. They waited for the experience as well. So by now we got the bullseye. We got the no control. Malthale is still waiting a little bit with a no one can stop death. And every lane is getting pressured right now. Every single lane. Keep at the top. Keep in the middle. They are both losing hit points. The red team cannot afford to lose anybody here. And they lose Jimmy right at the beginning of the fight. Malthel is murdering it. He gets healed by Rega. 84,000 damage for Hanzo. One keep is about to fall. They kill Urel as well. The second keep is also about to go down. This should be the end of the game. With them dropping Muradin, there's just nobody able to defend this any longer. Mayev and Lucio are the only two. This is it. Two armor shields gone. Three armor shields gone. Genshin Impact, the former CA team, they're moving on to the winner bracket final and they send Team Easy Girl down into the loser's bracket. GG, well played. Great performance here on all direct pass by the blue team. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.